Frank, we're here to set the ball rolling for April 27th, Wembley Arena. Now, Frank, what with Albert Hall Wembley? It's like the old days, isn't it? It is, uh, Albert Hall Wembley. Yeah, we've got to keep rolling with that, and hopefully we'll be back at the, Al- the Albert Hall game in July. So we're, you know, we're moving forward, keep making sure we're putting on big shows in London. It's quite a thing, Daniel, headlining at such a big venue with his tender years, but it shows the faith, his progression and the faith you've got in him. It does, and he's, uh, he's an excellent young fighter, great prospects, and he's done everything that's asked him. He had a tremendous performance last time out and earned himself a place to be top of the bill. And he's fighting somebody, quite a tough opponent, in Richard Larty, who's 14-1 and one Ghanaian. He's a big puncher, and he's ranked number 14 by the WBO, so he's fighting a well-ranked opponent. Now, you've probably had a good look and everything else, but is there the danger of the unknown bringing in a big punch in African with a fearsome record who is only defeat by the way came by retirement through injury so we're not talking a mug here Frank. No you're absolutely correct in what you're saying but we got faith in him and, uh, and, and as I said we want to keep stepping him up and uh, he wants to be stepped up he's very he's very very confident young man he's uh, and, and I feel that this is a this is a step up for him but I feel that he's capable of handling it at least I hope I'm right. It's quite frightening when you consider Daniel's 21. You think, where will he be when he's 25? It's quite a frightening exactly. thought. Exactly. And only had 10 fights as a pro and seven senior bouts as a, as a heavyweight, as an amateur. I said to him, word is getting out there, and you could tell that by the reception at the Albert Hall the other week. He was, the, the public are really taking to him. He's exciting. You know, he's, uh, as soon as he steps into the ring, he's just got that, that special specialness about him. And as you say, the public are taking to him, so... Um, that's great, and that's great news for for, the, for us in as much that we know that we're going to get bums on seats and people are going to come out and see him and we hopefully will turn him into a big star that he could become. With Nathan Gorman lurking in the background? He's certainly there. Nathan's doing his own thing in the meantime. He's a, he's fighting on Saturday in Leicester. He's had a bit of a problem, or we've had a problem with a couple of opponents pulling out, which is very frustrating for him, and, I'm, and I know he's not happy about that. But it's beyond our control what's gone on there, and he's now. But we found somebody for him, which the board are hopefully going to sanction. Um, he's just got to focus on winning on Saturday. That is, but the business we're in, it happens now and again. But it's unfortunately, that's a cute couple of times for him. But um, I just want to keep both the guys winning, and then hopefully we can get a big fight for him by the end of the year. Speaking of big fights, in support at Wembley, Commonwealth title, Lerone Richards v Tommy Langford. Now we know Tommy very well. He was with us, and he got to a level, didn't he, against Kurt Seeders, an interim world title. Lerone, he looks a natural, isn't he? I mean, he's awkward. People don't really want to fight him. They don't, but uh, Tommy stepped up to the plate. You know, Tommy's got a good pedigree, stepping up to the plate. He's, uh, I'll say stepping up to the plate. I think Lerone's stepping up. He's only had 11 fights. Tommy's had about 24. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a big step up for him, but he feels he wants it and is ready for it. And I'm sure Tommy's got other ideas. Um, so I think we're going to be for a, a, a cracking fight tonight. I'm not speaking behind his back because I said it to himself. Lerone's probably one for the purist a little bit, and I asked him if he needed to show a little bit more aggression in there. He sort of hedged his bets, but what do you think? Well, look, you know, some fights, I've seen fighters over the years. I remember Errol Graham. No one wanted to watch Errol Graham fight when he was, you know, in the early days. Then he became a, quite a big star. It happens, and, you know, it's up to Lerone to, to adapt and deliver. And I'm sure at the end of the day, if he comes through his fight, he will do. Alan Smith believes he's probably the most naturally talented boxer in, in British boxing, which is quite a statement. That is a statement, but he is a naturally talented fighter and he's an exponent in the art of hitting and not being hit, which is what boxing is supposed to be game. Yeah. Sonny Edwards, you've given him a showcase yeah. on BT Sport. He's coming on, isn't he? Very accomplished. He is. He's very accomplished. He's got a very good attitude. He's, uh, he's an exciting look, little fighter. He's got tremendous self-belief and confidence. And uh, I think he has to, I really do think he has the possibility of going all the way. He could carry a press conference on his own, wouldn't he? He can do, that's what I said, he's very confident, so I called him the old cheeky chappy, and uh, he's, he's, he's that sort of, you know, he's got that London thing about him, he like, you know, like the Cockney thing about him, and he's, uh, but he's, uh, you know, he can fight, that's the main thing, he can fight, and I, and I honestly do believe that he can go all the way. The Commonwealth title was won last weekend in Sheffield by Tommy Frank, it's a fight Sonny says he definitely wants. I think he's trying to persuade you to take a little show up to Sheffield for him. Do you see that as a possibility? Yeah, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Not at all. Not at all making that fight. If he wants it, then I'd like to try and deliver it for him. Elsewhere on the card, Zach Chelly, who really, last time he was on our show, 
took on Umar Sadiq, a fellow unbeaten fighter. You really showed what he's got inside of him, didn't he? He did. He stepped up to the plate there and uh, and, and you know came through it and done it and done his job in good style. Um, He's stepping up the plate again. He's only had six fights. He's in a ten rounder already, which is quite unusual for a, you know, for a super middleweight. Very rarely do you see that happen, but that's what he's doing. And uh, you know, Jimmy's going to have his opponent's going to have other ideas, but I think we're going to get another little crack at them too. As far as Zach's concerned, he's personable. He's explosive. He's exciting. He's kind of got that package. He's got that going for him, but he's still got a lot to learn. And uh, and but having said that, you know, he's, as I say, the confidence level is amazing with him. I've seen Jimmy Smith fight. He's tough. You know, he's uh, he won't be a walk in the park. No, it won't be. And I think we're going to get another little good fight out of that one. I think it'll be a cracker. Sorry to do this to you, Frank, but I'm going to keep going. I want to get a quick word on the Leicester show this weekend, which is headlined by Sam Bowen against Jordan McCrory. Now, I know... If I know personally, but you think Sam Bowen is the real deal? I do. I think he's a tremendous uh, fighter. He's done that, what he's done. He's done the hard way. I think it's a great division for us. It's a really sexy division. There's some gr- with us, we've got quite a few really good quality um, super feathers. And I think that you know when you when you're looking at the fights and the permutation that we can make out of those guys, it's going to be an exciting year for that division, and the, and the, the cream will rise to the top. At the same time, I think you said you're happy to press the fast forward button on Sam. I am. If, you know, it's all about opportunities. He's obviously got to come through this fight. He comes through it and see how he comes through it. But his last fight, he was quite impressive. And if he does the same thing again, you know, he can be in a position where um, you know we're going to be having to look at you know maybe stepping him up a bit more quickly, much more quicker. What are the odds on the Midlands area super welterweight title fight between CJ Challenger and Carl Hayward stealing the show on Saturday? I think it's just made for it, isn't it? Well, it's a great show. That's one of the reasons we had to postpone the show, because obviously the injury that one I've had, it's a cracker. It's another one. You know, that, we've had some really good fights on our undercard, some real good classic, you know, 50-50 fights, been great wars for the fans, real, real exciting fights, and I think we've got a potential one there. We've already covered Nathan, so just move on to Sam Maxwell, someone I know you rate highly. Moving on for his first title, WBO European, ten and zero now. You ready to push the button? Absolutely. He's, uh, you know, he's, he's not a youngster. I don't mean that this, you know, being rude about him, but he's he's ready to go. He's, I think he's a quality, quality operator. So let's get this one out of the way. Hopefully, he'll come through this, and then we can look at a game that's stepping him up. He's got to come through this fight first. And we'll see Ryan Garner again, Tommy Fury as well. We will, they're both on there, so I'm looking forward to seeing both of them in action. They're, they're, they're two young fighters that obviously have got, a, um, you know, got good futures in front of them. Frank, thank you very much.